So far I have created the sphere. I want to cut the sphere into half and I want to remove one of the halves. So first of all I want to you know put this under its own body. You can see that we have created a base section previously. I want to uh, you know separate these two from each other. So I go to insert menu and select the body. I right click on body and go to properties and change the name to main body. So I go select the main body here for this, I click OK. Now drag the shaft under main body so that these two are separate bodies. Now from on, now on I'm going to, you know, edit this main body. First of all, I need to create a plane in a 45 degrees to be able to cut this from this plane. So the first thing that I need to have is create a sketch. I go to YZ plane, go to sketch environment. Now that I'm in this environment, you can see the sketch name is sketch 7. Now that I'm in this environment, I want to find the center of this sphere. And of course, I have no idea how I can do this. I only want to select the project 3D and select the sketch that is used to create this sphere. Now that I have this here, I can go and find the center of this line. And you can see that this is not going to be, you know, selected separately. And for this, I have an idea of how to make this, you know, to different objects, one arc and one line. I go and select the mirror from operation tool set. Of course, you can go to insert menu operations and go to transformation, select mirror here. And now that I have selected this, edge, I select the line that is going to act as a mirror. I click on this, you can see that there is a mirror out of this sketch. I select the first sketch and delete it. Now you can see that I have an arc and I have a line here. The arc can have constraints applied to it. You can see that it is about 50 millimeters of radius. Now I know that I need a point that is in 50 millimeters from the you know end line of this line so I select a point put a point on so somewhere on the line so that I know that this is coincidence with the line of course if I didn't put this on the line I could do this using constraints now I click on some blank areas select the constraint tool I select the end point of this line and now select this point that I have created right now. You can see that it's about 25 millimeters here. I double click on this and make this 50 millimeters. Now I'm sure that this point is in the you know center of this sphere. And now I can select this point to create a plane with you know a parallel through point type of plane. So I exit my workbench. I click on a blank area, select the plane tool, go to select parallel through point and that's here the reference plane is going to be the XY plane the point is the point that I have created here now you can see there is a plane here I select uh, I click OK and select this plane right now that I have selected this plane I go to sketch environment and draw a line that goes through the center of this. So I select a line and draw a line that is, you know, coincidence with the horizontal uh, axis. I exit my workbench. Now I'm going to create another type of plane. So I select the plane tool. I go and select the angle normal to plane. The rotation axis is going to be the line that I just created. And the reference is going to be the plane that I just created. And now the angle is about 45 degrees. So you can see that the plane is created here. I right click on this sketch and hide it. Right click on this sketch and hide it. And now you can see that I have a plane here. The other plane is going to be hidden again. So I go and select this plane one and hide it. Now I have a plane here. Now that I have created this plane, I can go and select the plane, go to sketch environment and draw some arbitrary shapes such as a rectangle. And the only thing I need to know is I should make sure that this is spanning the whole sphere because I'm going to use this to cut the sphere. So 
I click on uh, and create this rectangle. I exit my workbench. This rectangle is going to be used for pocket. So I click the pocket tool. Now I should enter a value that is more than 50 millimeters. For example, 100. There's nothing in front of this shape and it's not going to make any harm for that. So I click the preview. You can see that it is in the wrong direction. So I click on reverse direction and that's okay. You can see that I have cut this. And now the only thing I need to is to, to empty inside this. So I go to insert menu, go to dress up feature and select the shell tool. This face is going to be removed and the thickness is going to be about 2 millimeters or 3 millimeters. That's okay. 3 millimeters is okay too. So I click on OK. Now you can see that this is emptied inside and that's very nice. If I check my uh, ashtray, I can see that there is an extrusion along the, you know, edges of this semisphere. So I need to create this and that's easy too. Let's go to the plane again that I just created. I go to the sketch environment. Now I'm going to create a circle that is aligned to the edge of this. So it is very easy. Let's show you. I can select the edge or I can select the inner edge. That's both, both are okay. So I select the outer edge that's easier and go to project 3D. Now you can see that I have a circle that is aligned to the edge. That's very easy. So I exit my workbench. This circle is going to be used for my pad. So I click on, uh, let's refresh the page. Click on the pad tool. Now you can see that the pad tool is about 100 millimeter. That's going to be 10 millimeter. It's too much. And this is not going to be filled inside. So I click on thick profile. And the thick profile tells me that there are two thicknesses. If you have selected the inner circle, you can select the thickness too. I have selected the other thickness, so I'm going to have this, and that's going to be about the, you know, uh, three millimeter that I selected for shell, and click on the preview that's nicely created here. So I click on OK. Now, if I have a closer look at the shape, I can see that there is a groove in the, you know, uh, joining of this pad and the semisphere. I need to create that groove either. So I need to create another plane to create the sketches that I need for this. So let's create the axis, create an axis, and using that axis, create the plane that is perpendicular to this plane. I need to go to this plane again, and now that I am in a sketch environment, I draw a line that is, uh, you know, in coincidence with the vertical axis. Now I have this as an axis. I exit my workbench. I select the plane tool. This is going to be the rotation axis. I need to go and select the angle normal to curve. So rotation axis is selected by default. It is going to be about 90 degree. And now that I have selected degree, the reference plane is going to be selected, so I highlight this and go select the plane. Now you can see that there is a plane that is 90 degrees with the, you know, first plane is created there. So I click on OK and OK, it's in this, like this. Now I need to create some other things. First of all, I need to hide these. And the plane that I just used is going to be hidden. This plane that is created right now is going to be selected. And I need to go to a sketch environment. The first thing I need to create is the circle that is going to be used for the grooving. So I go and click on the circle. And now that I have created the circle, I need to be coincident with the edge. So let's go and deactivate the circle tool. I select this line. And I click on project 3D. Now I have a line that has two ends. So I select the circle, now I can be coincident with one of the ends. So I draw a circle here, like this, and make sure the circle is about, for example, 2 millimeter or 3 millimeters in uh, diameter. 2 millimeters is OK. Now I have a circle here that can be used for the grooving, and I do not need this line again. So I click on the line and delete it. 
Now I need another sketch here. I want to have an axis of rotation. So I exit my workbench first, select this plane again, and again I will go to the you know sketch environment. Now I need to create a line that is going to be used as the axis, or I can select an axis. That's okay. So I click select a line. That's easier. I draw an arbitrator line. First of all, I need to make sure that this line is about 45 degrees because I know that this sphere is about 45 degrees in angle. So I select the constraint tool, I select this horizontal uh, axis and select this line. Now you can see that I have an angle here. I make sure that this is about 45 degrees. So I type in 45 and I click on OK. Now this is OK. The second thing is this. I need to make sure that this is crossing the center of this sphere. And for this I need to make sure that this is about, you know, uh, let's let's create this like this. I select this line for example and click on project 3D. That's very nice stuff. I like it. So I have a line here and that's about 100 millimeters in length. And I can prove you like this. If I click on this you can see that this is about 100 millimeters. So I delete this, okay? Now I go and select this edge, press control button, select the other edge, and now that I have selected the two edges, I select the line, and go and create a symmetry. You can see that the line is moved so that it crosses the center of my sphere. And it tells me that it is over defined. That's okay. I'm not, you know, going to do anything. Else. So I exit my workbench. Now I have two lines. It tells me that the sketch is either over constraint. That's okay for me. So let's go and uh, delete this angle. Or let's go and edit this. So I do not need this angle. So I delete it. I close this. Select the angle constraint that is here and delete the angle. Now you can see that it is fully defined. I exit my work mesh. I have two sketches. One that is going to be used for grooving to the, you know, and uh, the, the, the axis that I'm going to use for this. So I hide this as well using the show height. No, of course not. No, I'm going to do this. I needed to delete this. So I go to the sketch environment using this and delete the line that I do not need it anymore. I exit my work mesh and now I have an axis, I have a circle. So I select the groove tool. It tells me that I'm going to have a 30 a 360 degrees of rotation. The surface is this and the axis is this. No, the revolve is not. Okay, I need to select this line. And now you can see the grooving is nicely created for my shape. If I rotate it using the shift right click, you can see that there is a nice groove around my shape. And that's going to be about one millimeter of, you know, grooving. Now I need to hide these. 